ICOM's ID-1 transceiver is the ideal companion for any enthusiast of the D-Star system. The radio supports high-speed networking, as well as digital and analog voice over the 1.2 GHz amateur radio band. As the ID-1 continues to decrease in price, more and more amateur radio operators are going to be adding them to their shacks. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the neat features of the ID-1, as well as give you a good idea of how to configure and set up this unique piece of technology. The first thing you want to note is that the ID-1 does not have an onboard speaker. So when you're purchasing the radio, make sure that an external speaker is included with it, or that you have one in your shack. Secondly, uh, I've noticed that some retailers don't sell the ID-1 with the RC-24 control head. You'll want to purchase the control head as it makes operating the radio much simpler, especially if you don't have it connected to a computer at all times. Finally, the ID-1 connects to an antenna by the use of an N connector. So you're going to want to make sure that your antenna and feed line are both N compatible before you buy the radio. After unboxing the radio, the initial setup of the ID-1 is fairly straightforward. The RC-24 control head connects directly to the transceiver by way of a length of RJ45 cable, and the external speaker plugs into the audio jack at the back of the radio. The microphone plugs into the control head, or if you opted to not purchase the RC-24, then it will plug directly into the front of the radio. Connect the power supply leads to your 12-volt power supply and verify that the radio powers up. You'll also notice that the radio has both an Ethernet and a USB cable protruding from the back of the transceiver. Connect the Ethernet cable directly to your computer's network interface or to your router. This Ethernet cable facilitates the high-speed networking features of the ID-1. Finally, the USB cable should be connected directly to your PC as it allows you to operate the ID-1 without using the control head or the front panel of the radio, uh, and it also facilitates the programming of memory channels. Once you've connected the ID-1 to your computer, uh, you'll want to go ahead and install the drivers and software that should be included on the CD that came with your ID-1. Now, Windows should detect the ID-1 as a serial communications port after the driver installation, and you'll want to make note of what COM port number it is mapped to. Install the control software and go to your start menu and launch the application called ID-1. Click on COM port setup and point it to the COM port number you identified in the previous step. At this point, your screen should light up. You can use this utility to set up some of the initial configuration by entering set mode. You can also program memory channels by entering edit memory channel mode. Set mode is used for making initial configuration changes such as your default offset frequency, default repeater tones, and automatic repeater mode. Display brightness and other miscellaneous digital settings can also be controlled using this menu. Now the setup window is fairly comprehensive, however if you do need clarification then take a look at the well-written ID1 instruction manual that should be included with your radio. In addition you'll want to set up your call sign by pressing the CS button on the front of the ID1. The ID-1 is also capable of storing up to six messages, which can be transmitted along with your call sign. Uh, open up the message dialog window by clicking on the MSG button. You'll note that the transmitted message is displayed at the top of the window, while any received messages are displayed below that. Now, the ID-1 can only send one of the six messages at a time, and the selected message is indicated by a number next to the message text. Note that by default, this window will pop up every time a new message is received by your ID-1. Once you've programmed some simplex frequencies or repeater frequencies into your radio, uh, you can finally start to use your transceiver. The ID-1 can operate in one of three modes. VE7ALB, testing 1, 2, 3, 4. The first is that of a conventional 1.2 GHz transceiver. The ID-1 can transmit and receive analog FM messages uh, so that it is compatible with any other conventional 1.2 GHz radios. The second mode is that of the digital voice mode. This is an extension of the digital voice technology used in ICOM's 440 and 2 meter D-Star systems. And your call sign and transmitted message will be displayed on the screen of the person you're communicating with 
and you can communicate by way of a repeater with any users on 440 or 2 meters or anybody anywhere in the world by use of the internet gateway. Now I've prepared a detailed description on how the D-Star voice system works. Just visit my website at www.ve7alb.ca and click on the resources tab uh, to have a look at that. The third mode your ID1 can operate in is that of an advanced networking device. Uh, when in digital data mode, your ID1 acts as a modem to your computer. Using this, it is possible to access the internet uh, when you're on the same frequency as an internet connected ID1 or a gateway computer. You can also use the ID1 for file sharing. Imagine that one ham radio operator has an ID1 connected to his computer. He also has a shared folder on his computer with the permission set for anybody to write to it. Now imagine that across town a second ham radio operator uh, has another ID1 and a computer connected together. Now if the two ID1s are on the same frequency, Operator 2 can actually copy files directly to Operator 1's computer by just dragging and dropping. When connected via the Ethernet port, the ID1 is essentially a plug-and-play networking device. There is no doubt that the ID1 is a huge leap forward in amateur radio technology. The ID1 can be used to access the internet from a remote location or in the event of an outage. And in the event of a natural disaster, the ID-1 can be used to send weather data, maps, documents, or other essential information over great distances. As the popularity of the ID-1 increases, the potential for contacts is going to go up exponentially. And I don't think it'll be long before computer networking and amateur radio are prominently intertwined. Now in this video, I've just given you a brief overview of the ID-1. If you want more specifics on the D-Star system or how the ID-1 operates, please visit my website or contact me by email. For Tech Report, this is Christopher reporting.